Hi, welcome to Black Ticulate, 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 a podcast series featuring UK young black professionals, where we find out how they do what they do, so you can too. Or not. After all, it is your life. <laughs> hey guys, thanks very much for joining us. This is a rebroadcast of episode two, and it's with an amazing guest. I mean, all our guests are amazing, but Sana Abstract, she is phenomenal because she's always been a freelancer from the get-go, from the jump, and she teaches us how she does it. She's a creative, or in her words, she pretty much uses any medium or media that the eye can see. And she gives us stellar advice on how we ourselves can also become a freelancer and sustain a living. She really goes in depth, so hopefully, this is of value to you, or if not you, potentially someone else. So please do comment, please do review, even if it's just putting a star rating on iTunes, and do share it to anyone else that you think might take value from the conversation that I have with Senna. Without further ado, Senna Abstract. <laughs> okay, so guys, welcome to Black Ticulate again. Um, if you've never heard of this podcast, what the hell are you doing? Um, if you have heard of it, then you already know I interview great people, black people, millennials who are doing great things. And today is no different. So in front of me, I've got Abby. Now, Abby, I don't know you personally. I know you through Stasha. Mm-hmm. So can you identify yourself to my listeners, who you are, <sighs> your name, your age, your profession, Damn. where you come from, anything you want to give us? That's a lot of stuff. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. I, my name is Abby, Abby Kashenia, and I am a visual artist. What I mean by that is I am a creative who uses visuals. So anything to do with painting, sketching, filming, photography, anything that records something that the eye can see, that's what I deal with. And I currently have a studio space in Wood Green, um, working with a company called Imagine Real. And my company is called Sana Abstract. Sana is Swahili and Arabic for creative or work of art ah, interesting. Um, and abstract is purely because i'm just um yeah you're quirky <laughs> yeah and I, I like to think that i'm different from yeah i see things slightly differently from everyone i i question things i argue things um i don't agree with a lot of things so yeah um, I'm contrary. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, that's definitely true because, <laughs> yeah. and please elaborate on this story, but the way I've come to know you is you studied, what did you study? I studied, what, do you want to know from school? No, no, or degree. Degree. De- I studied um, photo media. Right. And the moment you graduated, you yeah. didn't do the typical, I'm going to be an intern, I'm going to do work experience. What no. was. Let me tell people your story. Okay. Uh, As soon as I graduated, I mean, just whilst I was at uni, I was um, working as a youth worker, teaching dance. Okay. So I'd already started this thing where I was working and I had my own, like, set pay. And I was doing it by teaching young people. And through teaching young people, I'd film some of the classes and stuff and kind of try and use it for my degree. And then um, on my spy, by my second year, I contacted this music video director who I didn't even think would respond back because his name is Luke Biggins. And if anyone knows about music videos in the UK, he's, he was the only one at that time that was dealing with music videos like hip hop. He's okay. done, you name it, he's done those videos. He was the MTV guy, you right, know, if right. you wanted an MTV video, he was the guy. So I, I naively just, you know, sent him one line email. I was like, one yeah. line. What did Literally, you say? I just said, "Hi, um, I've looked at your work and I'm doing a degree. Can I just come and take some pictures or something?" He responded because <laughs> in my head I was like, I don't think he's gonna respond, so I might as well try something. And like, when I met him, I asked him why he responded because the email was so crap. <laughs> and he 
said, well, you were straight to the point. Uh-huh. So I was like, okay, that's good then. So, uh, yeah, I want to, I just want to take pictures and hang around and learn a bit more about cameras um, because my degree was mainly based on theory. So how to write a con- concept and then represent that visually and get rid of your brief and someone can just look at your work and know what you're trying to say so that's Mm. that's yeah it's very fine art way of doing media okay yeah so um yeah I worked with them for about two years like at first obviously he wasn't paying me because I was like no no no, I'm not skilled yet um after a year I was like okay so I need to get paid now (laughs) (laughs) and he was like yeah you're, you're pretty good um and I was doing running at that right. time. Ah, so you like, did do running. Yeah, I did running. But whilst at uni. Yeah, yeah. So I did running um, during my third year. I was the only one in my class who was working and doing a degree. And then um, on the in the third year, I thought maybe I should stop working. And I was like, no, hell no. Because I don't know, this, this job might end me up somewhere. Because yeah, so far I'm working with big stars and it, it's fine for me and I'm getting paid. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I continued working. It was really stressful for the third year because dissertation and all of this stuff, handing in final major projects and crazy stuff. So um, he kind of said, I can take time out, but as soon as I finish, see how I feel. If I want to come back, cool. But he did say something to me. He said, um, in this industry that you're just about to go into, um, it's better to just walk around with purpose, like know exactly what you want to do. And if you get, if you hear of an op- opportunity, just just go. You just don't do have it. to do your master's. You don't have to keep studying and stressing yourself. Just do it. If someone says something to you and it sounds good and that's the direction you want to go in, just do it. Yeah. Just do it. That was your phone, wasn't it? I Sorry about that, guys. I my phone. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so as soon as I finished, I went straight into freelance. I was teaching young people photography and film, which I just finished learning. And um, was I this was all literally... Was youth working? Like, yeah. Like, because you were teaching them how to dance? Yeah, initially. yeah. Right. So I just said, you know what? I'm not teaching dance anymore. Um, I, I wrote myself a whole new um, contract um, I know, I didn't even know how to do it. I just wrote one. Um, it was one page. It was like a CV, but not a CV. Right. Because you're just saying like what you do and then you put like a, a paragraph of what your your skills can offer. Like, you know, um, I think at that time it said something like <laughs> um, working with young people between 8 and 15 offering media skills multimedia skills and then obviously later on I refined it and then it was like if you want to learn how to make a music video like a really quick one um yeah come to you yeah now that's interesting so who did you approach in order for you to be getting this as in like this cv who did you have to because I'm almost quite curious about your your first paid job as a freelancer okay um you know what I mean because if anyone's listening to this then they'll be like Oh, okay. So what? I don't have to... Oh, okay. Let me see how I can yeah. do this. And yeah. then this is the advice I'm hoping you can give them. Yeah. Um, first, I approached all the places I had worked before, if that makes sense. Okay. So under because it was... Under the youth league. Yeah. Okay. Under the youth league. And then I also contacted music videos. But this time I was offering to do artistic like set design artistic direction I know it was big for me to do that at the time but in my head I was like well I know I'm good at this (laughs) so it's gonna pay me what else is gonna pay me I was not gonna go and find a job because I'd seen how my friends were struggling to um to like apply every day JSA I do not believe in that stuff so I was like I'm not getting anything from the government I mean I've just finished a degree I owe loads of money I'm not about to go into begging for more money Mm. and I've got skills like skills that people need and most of the time when you're looking for jobs well from what I'd seen people do is there's a job you apply for it then you never hear anything yeah so it makes it made me wonder 
Well, do they actually exist? Are they real? So I was like, do you know what? It doesn't, it, it doesn't hurt anyone to just approach. I mean, it was a bit ambitious at the time. But um, yeah, I, I did one CV that basically had nothing for the creative stuff. And then I did one for youth because obviously I'd worked a lot with, in the youth sector. So I called myself, this was a label that's never been done before, a youth arts practitioner specializing in multimedia skills. Hmm. So anytime that quite yeah, nicely. <laughs> anytime someone heard that, they're like, oh, I'm interested. What do you do? Yeah. And then I'll tell them, like, do you know what? We have some young people at this area. Would you like to come? I'm like, yes, of course. Um, just as long as there's at least 10 young people, then we can work something out. Right. And literally my first job was um, doing photography with some year sevens to help them transition from being in, year, in primary school into secondary school okay. so it's almost like I was offering art therapy but at the time I didn't know that, that that's was what it was right. so I just called myself um a youth arts practitioner and we had loads of fun with these year sevens and um yeah and there were social workers there so it was good because you get help and then I can really focus on giving them the skill that they need mm. so but yeah but literally it was it was the government that paid me oh sorry <laughs> it was the government that paid me to Help these youth. To help youth, yeah, instead yeah. of me going for JSA. So I... Yeah, you switched it. Switched it around a little bit. Uh, that's amazing. So but you, yeah. that's what you studied. You knew your skills and you were like, you can apply that. You don't have to apply that in a corporate setting. You can apply... Basically, it was teaching. It was it was teaching the the young ones to come through, and that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So I guess, like, my question is now that you're officially a freelancer and you have been since you graduated... Mm-hmm. It's not easy. It's not regular. What are challenges? <laughs> I think um, the first and most frustrating challenge is convincing everybody else you have a skill okay. that should be paid for. Okay, give me give me a walkthrough of that. How do you do that? Like, okay, yeah. so you have your skill. You're you're ready. You've done your paperwork. You're going to approach someone, and you tell them, okay, this is what I can offer. They see, they say you're really good. And then you have your, you know, your price list ready. Right. And then they're like, okay, so I want this. And then you're like, okay, that costs this much. Say they wanted, uh, I don't know, photography for a wedding. Okay. For example. And I'm, I'm like, okay, that will cost me 300 pounds. So the client says, 300 pounds, that's a bit too much for pictures. Um, and then now you have to be like, okay, so I can tell you why it's 300 pounds because if a plumber came to your house and you wanted them to do some work in your house, you wouldn't really say that to a plumber no. because you know they're going to do the work and they have a set price. Yeah. <laughs> you pay them, they leave. Happy days. It's exactly the same for photography. <laughs> I come, yeah. I'd like, I don't need to tell you all the things that I have to do before I get to, to the place. And then I do the job. I don't finish the job there. Mm. I have to go and edit these pictures, do a book, do all these things that you want me to do, and then hand them back over to you. Yeah. So 300 is actually pretty <laughs> cheap for the first time that I'm doing this because it will cost me literally half of that money just to do what what you want yeah. me to do. So yeah, that that takes even till now I find that if you if you're meeting someone new that requires a particular skill, it's only because they probably don't know and just think, oh creatives just sit and do and, it's and easy create. Work, yeah. No. I mean the the idea is easy because it's in your head, but the the work, you're working just like everybody else. Yeah. You you are just as valuable as a plumber carpenter whoever it is and it's just having that confidence I mean it took me a while and for for a while I was offering a lot of freebies here and there because I just couldn't be bothered to argue right, okay. yeah and then when the person sees the work they're like oh my gosh do you know what next time I'm like I don't know I don't know if I could do it next time okay. because we've already had this thing it's a bad relationship yeah, yeah so I can't I can't do it but yeah I think the, the so, biggest challenge yeah. is getting paid for what you're good at okay but 
<laughs> so, okay, I get that. So, but, I mean, you strike me as someone who knows how to get gigs. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean yeah, yeah, Even yeah. by writing a simple one-sentence <laughs> email to one of the biggest at a Thai video producers. <laughs> but for those who don't, it's almost a case like my, you know, my listeners, they'll be like, oh, snap, okay, Abby, yeah, how do I do what she does? Mm-hmm. And that's what I almost want to, I want okay. almost you to give them, like, a, a decent crib sheet, almost Jesus. a cheat sheet. I don't know if there's a method. Okay. But I know, like I said, I've been pretty ignorant with what has been done or what I shouldn't do, what I should do. I woke up with an idea of what I wanted to do, who I can talk to. At the time, I didn't know how high or low they are. It's just like, okay, that's what I want. And I'm going to try. Like mm. asking, I've, I'm a big, I'm a firm believer of asking. Like ask and you will find out if, I don't know, you see someone doing something that you're interested in, ask them, can I, can I come along? Can I watch? Can I, at least for 20 minutes, just when you're prepping, can I help out? The little things like that can get you to the right places at the right time yeah. because it isn't I don't think I don't know if there's a method maybe there is but my method was literally asking and doing and I'm very stubborn when I have an idea I have to do it I don't care what you think yeah. <laughs> I don't care how much money I require or need to do it um I'll do it yeah I'll do it and most of the stuff I've done it's been no money like do you know what I'm doing this and then people see it. it's like, okay, now I want to pay you for that. Mm-hmm. Because I just don't, you know, it's like when you say you want to write a book and then someone says, oh my gosh, it takes years. You know, you've got to do a manuscript, you've got to do this, chapters and find a publisher and all of that. Mm-hmm. I'm the person that would be like, I'm writing a book and literally shut everyone down and probably try and do it in three months just to prove that I don't think it's that difficult to do something that you really want to do. So if it's something that you want to do, then there's more than enough for everyone to do that. But if you're not so sure, take time. Like don't don't push or force things. Just take time because some people don't even know what they really want to do. Yeah, I think that's often one of the most difficult yeah. things, finding out what you want to do. Yeah, and what I say to those people, because um, my sister was lo- like that, take your time, take your time, and um, it's mainly the things that you enjoy doing that are the things that you really want to do or where your heart is or where your purpose is, the things that you really enjoy, things that you were doing from when you were a child. Mm-hmm. That takes no pressure no monies, things that you would do for free. I always ask people, if if there was no money for you to get paid at what you do, would you still do what you do? That's a great question. So if you can answer that question with what you do, Happy that's days. what yeah, that's what you're meant to do. It's like um I was speaking to I don't know if this episode is gonna air before or after um Stasha. Yeah. Who's our mutual friend and yeah. she mentioned that for her bacon isn't a job it's a lifestyle so she will never retire from it exactly she would always continuously bake exactly so for me that was just like yeah if i can find that amazing That's days it. yeah and um listen to people's stories and just trying to get people's stories like what i'm doing mm-hmm. right now is pleasurable mm-hmm. so okay abby you've, you've given some gems like you've given <laughs> some gems and but i don't know do you have a process when the chips are down, like when you're really struggling? Like, is money, money to you doesn't seem to be an issue, but is it? Yeah, it, in the grand scheme of things in the society that we live in, money is, it, yeah, it can hinder creativity. So if you are someone that's used to getting paid all the time or every last Friday of the month or something, mm-hmm. You might want to take some time planning your route out or having accounts, having three, four accounts where there's one that just takes in money, there's one that 
you put in money for bills and stuff like that and there's an account that you never touch money goes in it never comes out unless there's something that you need and then there's an account that you put money for you to spend right okay. so um when like for example when you're freelance there's days or weeks or months that you're not going to have clients. You're mm. not going to have work. Because obviously, if you're a sole trader, if it's just you, um, it's, a, it's a bit more difficult to maneuver. Whereas, you know, if you're starting a company and you've got quite a few people on the job, you've got employees, you know, they get, I think they, they give you like a, a grant or a loan where, you know, you can start off doing what you're doing because mm-hmm. obviously it's, a, it's on a, bigger skill but for me i don't feel it's it needs to be that big yet right i'm starting to build a team but it doesn't need to be that big yet so when you're a sole trader it's almost like you have to think throughout your year so you plan 2016 by june by the end of june 2015 you've got your 2016 all of it sorted so you know you got a client in between January to February, there's there's a good project going on there. And then you can have three or four at the same time. Um, it depends on how you spend your money and what you need to survive. Right. Like rent, whatever you need. You just know that you've got something consistently there. So that when you don't have, you've got an account that had you'd reserved. You've got your reserve area where you can be like, okay, do you know what? Um, for the next three months... I need to take out money from here to be coming into the, you know, expenditure account yeah, yeah. so that it can pay the bills. And then, you know, I sit at home, do more research, do okay. more projects, like where I don't need to spend money. Because right. if you're not, if you're not going to work, you don't really need to spend money apart from pay bills. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, interesting. So I often ask people just some light ones. Now, you clearly getting successful you are you, you, you're there um what what can we do our listeners or anyone who's listening mm. to help you do you need help yeah we always need help <laughs> um well always need help um for me I think it's just um my job is very much word of mouth um if people know about well, Sana Abstract, just to hashtag Sana Abstract Art. If you see it out there, if you see me, just say hi, hashtag, yeah. tag me. Like, um, I like cool stuff like that. Anything visual, um, yeah. They can get in touch? Yeah, and Something I'm actually like looking for an assistant. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm looking for someone out of school. Or out of college, um, that's highly interested in film and photography. Um, it's for paid work, but then it depends on how much we make and yeah, those projects. Yeah, yeah. It, de- it depends on how much I'm making. But yeah, I'm definitely looking for someone to do some work experience, apprenticeship, and all of that stuff. Um, and yeah, which should and, be fun. And I was gonna say. Black Ticulate, if you're to use it as a sentence, what does that mean to you? Um, when I first read the word, yeah. <laughs> no lie, I was <laughs> like, I wish I came up with that. Because <laughs> I'm one for words. But um, I thought, wow, this, well, to me at the time, it said uh, an intelligent black person. That's, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. That was it for me. Yeah. And I was like, I wish. You know those things you see and you're like, oh, man, that's so great. Why did not it come out of my head? It's grand. Brilliant. It's grand. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, Abby, honestly, you've been amazing. And guys, get in touch with her. How, how, how can we find you, actually? Website? Okay. Um, website is currently on the making process um because i do everything myself um so i'm doing that currently i didn't have to do it before i've got a tumblr which is on an abstract art and um i have a instagram account which is on an abstract art how are we spelling that 
Oh gosh, yeah, it's um, for Sana Abstract is S A N double A. Abstract is A B S T R A K T, and then art. That was definitely abstract. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> and it, it's an acronym as well, so that's why there's a there's a K there. But yeah, it's pretty easy to cool. find me. It's really easy to find me. Um, uh, the the studio is under Imagine Real dot com okay. so that's the that's the website if you want to see a lot of the work that I do with um partner company which is Imagine Roll. Um and yeah there's some 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 stuff on Flickr. Um there's a recent video that I just done for McKellamine World Changer called Why Not. So if you check that out awesome. you'll see my work. Um Fuso DG Antenna um creative created for that um yeah there's 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 loads of stuff i can't even remember yeah. how many people but yeah it's it, you can find me like i say you're doing positive things and yeah. great things so yeah. nothing but up and up wish you all the best hey guys we really appreciate you listening. And if you have any feedback, please leave it in the comment section below. Also, all the info about the guests, the links and the resources we speak about will be in the description below. And last but not least, please, please, please do get in touch if you can teach us how you do what it is you do. Because after all, Black Ticulate is all about empowering and upskilling the community. Thanks, guys. You're the best. See you soon.